Everybody, stay. Let's yes, get on our feet and worship the Lord together.
anyone here desperate for Jesus this morning? power in the name of Jesus this morning. Yeah. There's, a, there's still power in the blood of Jesus this morning. You know that heaven and earth will move when believers start to speak his name and power and authority. And every chain will be broken right now in the name of Jesus.
power of life and death reside in our tongues this morning? In the name of Jesus right now, I just speak life. I'm going to speak life. I'm going to speak freedom to the captive this morning. I'm going to speak life to the dying and the dead this morning. I'm going to speak healing to the sick this morning in the name of Jesus. I'm going to speak restoration to the brokenhearted this morning. Because that's what the Holy Spirit is here to do in our midst. Let's not miss this opportunity. finances, whatever the struggle is this morning. 
is in captivity, is under a curse, is under just a cloud of death and error and pain. I want to open up these altars right now, right now. And I want you to bring those spiritual chains with you and lay them here at the feet of Jesus right now. Because I need freedom in my life. Do you need freedom in your life? Do you want to be free of your chains and your sickness? I'm just going to enter just a brief moment of prayer, and I want anyone in need of prayer, in need of healing, in need of restoration in their family, in their homes, to come and bring that right here. And we're going to leave it here at the feet of Jesus. Because he cares so much for us, he said, cast your cares upon me.
Let's just thank Holy Spirit for his presence here this morning. Give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for forgiveness of sin. Thank you for the blood and the sacrifice. Thank you for the price that was paid on our behalf. Thank you that the offer still stands. That if you're breathing here this morning, it is not too late for you. God still has something for you to do. And it's not too late for freedom right now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for freedom. I thank you for freedom. I thank you that it is for freedom that you set us free. God, I thank you that you're here today to save souls, change lives, and break chains in the name of Jesus. I pray you would do so in the service this morning. Just fill us with your Holy Spirit right now. Just fill us with your Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. We we'll ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. All God's people say it. Let's say Jesus right now, Jesus. Jesus. Turn to your neighbor, tell him Jesus is fixing it right now. You know, the Bible says that only the anointing breaks the yoke. And I believe that this morning God has broken many chains off of many hearts, many lives, many minds, and people are going to walk out here different than how they came. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give a strong hand clap to the Lord. Yeah. Wow. I really believe that Fellowship of the Nations is transitioning into another level of uh, the presence of God. Be ready for something great to uh, continue to outpour over this ministry. Let me tell you something. If you're not part of this ministry, you need to get plugged in. You need to get connected. You need to begin to grow roots within this ministry because God is about to pour upon his glory upon like never before upon this ministry. I believe it. I believe it. And how can you help? How can you be a part of this? You see, it's not just attending and just coming, but really uh, being a part of, uh, uh, of the harvest of souls. And a, a big part of it is also part of your giving. You see, the Bible says that, uh, that, that we need to give generously. And, and, and whenever we do give a part of our finances, we're literally giving a part of our life. Why are we giving a part of our life? Because money literally is a representation of your time. Time is a representation of your, of your life. Therefore, whenever you bring your offering unto the altar of the Lord, you're saying, God, I'm giving you my life, Father. I'm trusting, God, that everything is going to be okay, God. I know, Lord, that they tell me maybe I shouldn't give and be obedient to 10%. Sin, but I'm going to put that voice aside and I'm going to focus, Father, on what the covenant that you've given unto your church, God. And if we're obedient, I promise you, I am a living witness within my home. God will take care of all your needs according to his riches and glory. All you need to do is be obedient. So let's bow right now our heads and go and pray over the offering, over the tithes. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for all that you continue, Lord, to do, Lord, within this ministry, Father. We thank you, God, because the faithfulness, Father, of your people, God, that they are not just giving to give, Father, but they're giving what they purpose, Father, in a reason, God. And it's that your gospel continues, Lord, to extend far greater from these four walls, God. We thank you for every heart, God. We thank you for every mind, Father. We thank you, God, because out of this congregation, Father God, many pe people will rise, Father God, to be blessed, Father, on a financial aspect, God. I thank you, God, because you're fortifying, God, and you're uh, uh, molding, Father, a generation, Father, of people, God, that will just trust you, God, with everything that they are, God. We bless, Father God, their harvest. We bless, Father God, their giving, Father, and we declare that they reap, Father, a hundredfold back according to what your word says, God. We thank you for all that you do, Lord, and we pray all this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. God bless. Make yourself at home. Make yourself at home. Make yourself at home within my heart, Lord. Everyone is gone. I'm here all alone. So make yourself
This has been a nice uh, time for me. This year, I have made 55 years teaching in this town. And for the students on this show tonight, well, the you know, first United Methodist Church, that includes me. I go to First United Methodist Church. Reverend Jones, Bill Jones, opened our show last time, and he's not here tonight. So John Baker is here, Bob Spencer, Michelle Casey, and I all go to First United Methodist Church. So John is going to sing a song that's very popular nowadays, and it's Christ the Lord is Risen Today, and he's going to do Amora too, okay? My name is John Dacre. The Lord is risen today, hallelujah. Sons of men and angels say, So fine that some more me. What? Some more me. Bells will ring, tingling, ling, tingling, ling, and the bell ring, more Some more to me, but you see back in old Napoli that some more. You may get the word. You may get the word. Mr. Morey, hold it in the air like you really, really care. Say it with me. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. It is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. I will hide his Word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Holy Spirit, give us ears to hear and strength to obey. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. How's everybody doing? I'm talking about making a joyful noise this morning. <laughs> How many know that God's not interested in your ability <laughs> or your talent? Um, humans are, uh, but God is not. God told Samuel when he went to anoint David that man looks at the outside, but God looks at the heart. Aren't you glad? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know I am. Mm. Uh, so Psalm 66, 1, uh, in King James Version, says, Make a joyful noise 
unto God, all ye lands. Make a joyful noise. Um, the NIV says, shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Amen? Isn't that good? Um, I used to uh, work at a job where someone drove me to the post office every day. And this man and I got to talking about Jesus and church. And uh, I told him that I sing at the church and that we had, we had made a CD of original songs. So I gave him one. And he liked it. So he gave me a CD from his church that they had made. And I looked at the back. I didn't really listen to it, and to be honest, at first. I looked at it. I was like, well, I, I know a lot of these songs. They're from popular songs. And then uh, I saw him the next day, and I said, and he said, would you, how'd you like the CD? And I was like, well, I, I know a lot of those songs. Didn't have not listened to it. He goes, yeah. Like, well, that's not really a compliment to say that you know the song. So I went and listened to it because I felt bad. And it uh, was a Church of Christ CD, which meant that there was no instruments on it. It was just singing, a cappella. And I was very confused because I wasn't aware that he was Church of Christ. It had never come up. So I went back and I said, um, this is just voices. He goes, he's like, yeah, isn't it great? I was like, I guess, you know, I'm like, so y'all don't do any instruments? He goes, no, we don't, it's just singing. It's just singing. Why is that? He couldn't really explain to me why. He just said, well, you know, everyone has different tastes, and, and I, I don't, I'm not, I don't judge. I just say that this is what I like, and that's what you like. And I was like, well, that's nice. Um, but it's just singing. And then I was I thought, well, what do y'all think about Psalms? Because doesn't Psalms, Psalms is pretty clear that you need to use instruments. You know, it's especially Psalm 150, it kind of puts the whole band together and there's harps and there's lyres and high cymbals and low cymbals and trumpets. And, and they just kind of like, yeah, forget all that. We're just going to sing. And the whole time I listened to it, man, you know what? This sound, the voices sounded really good. They had harmonies. But I'm like, you know what would make this better? Any instrument. Anything at all. Any kind of accompaniment would improve the sound of the singing. So even thousands of years ago in King David's time, they knew you needed a band to back up the vocals, you know. Um, styles are not important. God's not really interested in the style, I don't think, of music that you use. It's all about the position of your heart. And that's why there's all kinds of worship. And all denominations, uh, I'm sure, have their own little flavors and s favorite songs and stuff like that. Um, but God's not interested in style. He's not interested in production value or uh, stage presence or performance. Um, like I said, we are because that's what we respond to. We've been programmed to respond to certain kinds of sounds and songs and tempos. And uh, God doesn't really care about that. If it's just singing, if it's just you singing by yourself, and it's from your heart, and it's in spirit and in truth, God accepts that as worship, and that's pleasing to God. Um, so the song is an important. Uh, we all have our, anybody have like a favorite worship song? Anybody? We all? Um, and if, if you're at a service, maybe one of our services, and you hear that song, suddenly, like, your worship kicks in, and you're suddenly in the mood to worship. Somebody uh, uh, that I work with here requested a song that we're going to sing next week. And she said, when y'all start singing that song, even the first line of that song, I just, I get so excited. And, like, so nothing before that line 
it wasn't until the Euro song started. Then, you know, and I get, and I've talked before about how I get very, I used to be very judgmental, um, especially if I had to go to another church and hear them sing, and it's a lot of arms folded like, you know, it's kind of an old song. Or I wouldn't, I wouldn't sing it like that. You know, it's a lot of that, like critiquing, you know, like I'm one of these American Idol guys. American Idol is still a thing, right? Is it? No? Who is it now, The Voice? The Voice is the one where they turn around. So if I could have a rotating chair when I go to other churches, it would take a lot for me to... Um, but yeah, so we're, we all have our favorite songs. God, I don't think has a favorite song. I think he just wants to hear what's in your heart. And, uh, you know, it says in, I think it's Revelation says, we're constantly singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. I hope that's his favorite song because apparently he hears it all the time. I hope he, huh? So Revelation song will be his favorite. That's what it is. It's a crazy thing. No. Um, yeah, I don't think he has a favorite song. Um, I have some a couple favorite songs that I'm, um, I won't list now. But uh, I h- hope that when I come into worship, especially if I'm leading worship like today, that the position of my heart transcends whatever song or style or how good I'm playing or how good or what difficulties we have with the sound or stage set up. Can we have just a, a, a very short hand clap for this new stage that we had? Some very kind uh, men put together for us uh, this week, and, and uh, we all need to give them hugs and kisses. Uh, so we worship because God is worthy, not because uh, it sounds good or looks good. We worship because he first loved us, and we worship because it's what we were designed to do. Um, there's a sound that is, uh, in, without a doubt in my mind, the best sound in the world. I'm going to tell it to you now. It's a large crowd singing the same song. That's the best sound in the world. It's the best sound in the world. Watch any. That's why I like concerts. You go to concerts and you get to sing with people you don't know and have nothing in common with and may not even like. But you all know this same song, and for four minutes you get to sing it really loud together, and it's awesome, right? You know, there's lots of... uh, great literature and great films and things that make you feel good and uh, give you goosebumps, you know. But nothing will give you goosebumps faster, or in my case, than 80,000 people saying, no, 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 hey, Jude, for 12 minutes. It's the best sound in the world. Because you're all doing it together. And this is a representation of a task that we were designed to do. Sing as one body, as one voice, the same song to the same audience, which is God. That's why every modern worship song has a refrain of what o's in it. Anybody heard the what o's? Ro and o. We put them together. We say it a lot. We stick it in every song. And then people don't have to learn your lyrics. Our part's over. Skip the lyrics. Straight to the goosebumps. We even put some in our songs. Why? People like to sing them. And it's the quickest way. It's a shortcut to the unified voice. Right? There's not usually no harmonies on a what oh. And there's no other words on the what oh. It's just what oh. And you and you can sing it as loud as you want it. And you can look ridiculous doing it. And nobody cares because it's the what-oh part. And this is the favorite part of the hymn. 
Everybody's favorite part of the song. So, and if the crowd is raising their hands in unison, I might as well be levitating. That's like the best thing in the world, you know. I've seen concert films where people are singing the same thing, and everybody's like, you know, 20,000 people are, are doing this with their hand. It looks amazing. All those, you know, white arms. It's a rock show, you know. Um, <laughs> it's the best thing in the world because we're, we're all moving as one, we're singing as one, and there's a unification of people who, like I said, have nothing in common, really, other than they know the song and they're fans of whoever is singing. Mm -hmm. We love those moments because they are uh, just a little peek at what we're, one of the things we're designed to do. And something that pleases God when we sing as one. So number one, if you're taking notes, his works demand our worship. Thought question. I was told not to use the microphone when it burned. So I didn't want to be trapped behind the podium. Here I am. Trapped by this little needle. I'll move around in a minute. Keep your eye out for it. You're going to see me wander slightly. And when you do it, you'll go, see? He's not using the boom. He can move around. He's got freedom. Uh, his works demand our worship. 92, Psalm 92, verse 1 through 5 says, It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High. Proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night to the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp. Do you see? That's what I play. Uh -huh. uh, for you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. How great are your works, Lord. How profound your thoughts. He has done so much. In this current culture of detachment and distraction, we miss the big picture. It's hard to see the hand of God at work in our busy little lives. A few moments of quiet reflection are rare but necessary to seeing the multitude of works God has done for us, in us, and through us. At the moment of realization of what he has done, our only appropriate response is worship. A song or a hallelujah or a simple prayer of thanksgiving. Do you ever stop and think about what God has done for you? Just a couple seconds of reflection like, you know what? God really loves me. And he really blessed me. You know how I know? Because you're here this morning. You woke up this morning, didn't you? You've got clothes on your back. You probably came here in a vehicle from a house. And we're free to congregate and worship God as we like. None, that whole list of things are not the case for a lot of the world. And God has blessed us abundantly. Have we done anything to deserve it? I don't think so. So let's stop every once in a while and take those moments of reflection and just worship God because he's worthy. Number two, his presence demands our praise. And I, this is one of my favorite, this is my favorite description of God in the Bible uh, as far as his awesomeness. Psalm 18 6 through 15 says, In my distress I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. The earth trembled and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. 
Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him, hailstones and bolts of lightning. The dark rain clouds of the sky, out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemy with great bolts of lightning. He routed them. The valleys of the sea were exposed, and the foundations of the earth laid bare at your rebuke, Lord, at the blast of breath from your nostrils. That's the God we serve. That's my God who's working on my behalf. We serve a God of unimaginable power, a creator in absolute sovereign control over the elements and the vast expanse of the universe itself. He is all-powerful, all-knowing, and everywhere. And when we worship, his spirit is made manifest in our presence. All we have to do is act accordingly. We lavish him with praise. We bow before him in reverence. We love him completely. We offer him all of ourselves. It's the only reasonable reaction in the face of such a being. He is God. We are not. There is nothing left to discuss. He's the king of kings. Lord of lords, the Alpha and Omega, there is none like him, and he inhabits the praises of his people. He inhabits them. In other words, when we're singing in one voice, no matter what the song, no matter what the style, if we're worshiping in spirit and in truth, his spirit is here among us. And we need to act like that. We need to understand what that means. I love this church. I love this church. Precisely because a lot of you are what we would call unchurched, meaning that you didn't grow up the way I did, going to church every time they unlock the doors and sitting in thousands and thousands of services and becoming accustomed to this is just what I do now with my life, you know. Can't go to this, can't go to that because I'm going to be at church. Um, but because of the culture we have cultivated here, which I hope you would agree is very welcoming and warm and relaxed, we forget sometimes that we're walking into the presence of God and we miss the point of what we're doing when this music starts. It's not a show. It's not entertainment. We're here to worship the God of the universe. And I love you. I love you. I lo Watch me. Love you. I love you. I love you. Okay? But I've seen when we start singing, a lot of just walking in. Some of the finger guns, you know, high fives. And, you know, a lot of the phone while we're singing, okay? A lot of the phone, just tweeting this out. And I have to close my eyes. If you see me singing with my eyes closed, it's usually because I've seen some of that. And I get distracted because no matter how many people are worshiping and singing and participating, I will laser in on the one person <laughs> that's not and get distracted, you know. Also, maybe you can be done eating For the song, you know we had that countdown. You might seen the countdown video. That's to prepare you to wrap it up, <laughs> wrap it up, conclude whatever you're doing, and get in here 
because thank you. Here's the other thing. Even after the countdown and after a termite comes up here and yells at us, you still have another minute to, to get your business done, you know. Hug it out with some people. Walk over here now. We're in the presence of God. And just because we're not wearing suits and we're not playing pipe organs doesn't mean you shouldn't be irreverent when worship starts. And if you're one of the ones that you're like, oh, he's talking about me because I was on my phone and over there. This is called teaching. It's not your fault that no one ever taught you this, but now I'm teaching you this. Because the example set was not clear enough, so I'm telling you plainly, countdown starts at 10, 20, 23, 10, 23, because then we need a minute to hug. Yeah. And the online streaming starts when we start the music. So if we're online streaming and people are watching online, and you're a chitty chatting, chitty chitty bang bang walking in. We can see it. I love you, I love you, I love you. <laughs> All right. And number three, his grace demands our gratitude. As for you, this is Ephesians 2, verse 1 through 5. As for you, you were dead and your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath, I was by nature deserving of wrath, and so were you, okay? But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And when I get into the presence of God and worship, this is what's on my mind. If you're wondering what I'm thinking about, when we start moving into a spontaneous moment, it's this. That I was dead in transgressions and by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for me, God who is rich in mercy, made me alive with Christ. Even when I was dead in my transgressions, and it's by his grace I have been saved. We serve a God who is rich in grace and mercy. He forgives us, saves us, redeems us, and frees us from the slavery of sin. Why does he do it? For the most mind-boggling reason of all, because of his great love for us. And I'll never understand that. I'll never comprehend it. His great love for us, for me, for Locke Aaron Brady, for me. And what is our response to his love? What can we offer? What could he possibly stand to gain by loving us so much? Our worship. Our response is worship. That's why we sing. That's why we go through all this effort to lead you into the presence of God because of his great love. 
This is our response to his grace. Our worship, our time, our love, our everything. Because he is awesome and mighty and merciful. And because he first loved us, we worship him. We bring our sacrifice of praise into this house. And we offer it up to him as our best gift. We serve a God who is worthy of our best, of my best, the best I can do. I'm not the most talented. I'm not the best singer. But I'm going to do my best when I get up here because he's worthy of it. We used to watch American Idol. Can I go back to American Idol? It's, it's still not a reference. I know. Nobody watches it. It's canceled. But we would watch the auditions every year. And this is when I lived at home. I'd watch it with my parents. And they would say, you need to be up there on that. You need to be auditioned. You're better than those singers up there. Of course, this is like, you know, the first couple auditions where they're really bad. The ones that, the ones everybody likes. Um, and I said, yeah, I know. I know how good I am. I also know I'm not good enough to be judged weekly on live television across America. My talent is not quite at that level. I'm, am I better than William Hung? Is William Hung still a reference? Anybody know who that is? Am I better than him? Probably. Am I better than Carrie Underwood? No, I'm not. When God gave me talent, he also gave me a very realistic self-awareness about exactly where I fit in show business. Am I good enough to sing up here? I hope so. But I'm going to keep doing my best just in case I'm not. If I start giving 50%, it's going to be pretty clear. And I might have to take a hiatus. You just, you just sit down for a couple weeks, you know. So we serve a God who is worthy of our best. When you enter this house of worship, do so with the intention of bringing your best worship. Come prepared to worship. Not just prepared to hear your favorite song or see your favorite people or compare clothing. But with an attitude of worship, we're here to Sing to one person. Amen? All right. Now, I can't teach on worship without singing just a little bit. Could we sing a couple songs together? Okay. Um, Give me 30 seconds. For 30 seconds? I'm going to sing two songs that I grew up singing and then one we all know. And uh, if you know them, please sing along. But let's just enter this time. This is not going to be very long. In an attitude of reverence and worship and wanting to give our best. So I'm going to try to do my best today. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. 
Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Sometimes the night is beautiful, sometimes the sky is so far away, sometimes it seems it stoops so close, you could touch her but your heart would break, sometimes the morning came too soon, sometimes the day could be so hot. There is so much work left to do, so much he's already done. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you, and I will seek you. Sometimes. 
of the climb can be so steep. I may falter in my steps, but never beyond your reach. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days, oh God. Let's do our best this morning. Let's sing it loud. And I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your presence. Oh, yeah. I love, I love Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you. 
merciful God, oh, the wonderful Savior, oh, the mighty deliverer, the powerful God. all your deeds what a merciful God oh, we love you Lord oh, we love, we love, we love your presence oh somebody tell him somebody tell him how much you love him today we love, we love, we love, we love, we love. Wonderful, merciful, beautiful. Lord, you're everything to me. You're my everything, my everything. Everything. Savior, my Redeemer, my Deliverer, and my Healer, the wonderful God. We love you today. Jesus sing. Just recognize and confess that we would be lost without you, God. And maybe you're here this morning. And you never felt his love. And maybe the Holy Spirit's here talking to you right now. He's saying today's the day. You've been running long enough. You've been carrying that burden long enough. And that shame. And that yoke of bondage around your neck. And God's calling your name today. He's calling you out. We're going to open these altars one more time for just, just a moment. And if you're tired of running, you're tired of living for the world, because you've seen what they have to offer and you know it's not enough, let me tell you, this church is full of people who know exactly what that feels like. And they've been exactly where you are. And they'll tell you today that Jesus is enough. And I'd like our prayer partners to come up just for a moment.
Lord, if that's you this morning, you feel the, the call of the Holy Spirit saying that it's time to stop running, it's time to come back to the, to the Lord today. Every one of these people here today know exactly what you're going through and they want to pray with you and they want to introduce you to the creator of the, of the universe today because he's here to meet with you. So we're going to open these altars right now. We're going to play one song. And if you're ready to come to Jesus today, if you're ready to, for him to meet you right where you are, now is the time and today is the day. So let's do that now. Hello, I'm Johnny Brady. I'm lead pastor here at Fellowship of the Nations. I want to say thank you for tuning in with us today and our service. And really the heart of our ministry is to introduce you to Jesus. You may have been a Christian for a long time, and we say thank you for, for tuning in and being a part of it. Hopefully you've been blessed today just by God's Word and maybe just the worship service that gave you a little time to spend with worshiping the Lord. But maybe you are online because you're searching, you're looking for truth. And I believe the truth is in the Bible, the Word of God. And the Bible simply says that Jesus loves you very much. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been and all the sins you may have committed. Matter of fact, the truth is we've all sinned. And the Bible states that very clearly. Romans 3, 23 says, we've all sinned. We've fallen short of God's glory. But it goes on to say in Romans 5, 8, it says, God demonstrated his love for you. That even though you've blown it, even though you've sinned beyond anybody's imagination of who they thought you were. We've all been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. But what God says is, I love you anyway. And let me demonstrate it by this. I'm going to give my son, Jesus, to die in your place. He's going to take every sin you've ever committed and place it upon himself. And he did that on the cross. And the reason why is because he loves you and he wants a relationship with you. He was buried, rose again on the third day to conquer death, hell, and the grave. And basically what that means is, he says, I want to give you eternal life. I want to spend eternity with you. Not only does he create you in your mother's womb, not only does he have a purpose and plan for your life, but he says, I want to spend eternity with you. And so really what we have to do is we have to look at what has separated us from a holy God. And it's the three letter word, it's called sin. We've all sinned, we've all fallen short of God's glory. But God says, even though you've done that, if we will recognize our sin, repent, that means turn away from this lifestyle that we thought was right, and turn to Him to say, God, I've broken your commandments, I've sinned against you. And if you can love me, even though I've sinned like I have, and you can forgive me, you got me. Matter of fact, that's exactly what happened in my life. I looked at my sin, and I looked at what I was doing with my lifestyle, and I said, I need something better than this. And I just went home, I got on my knees and asked God to forgive me of my sin, to cleanse me. And I said, God, I'll live for you as hard as I've been living for the devil. And that's what he did. It wasn't lightning bouncing off the walls or anything like that. But he said, his word says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And I took him at his word. And I committed my life to follow him, repented of my sin. And the Holy Spirit of God actually came into my life just like he wants to come into yours. And he was my power source to give me strength to resist temptation and to overcome sin and, and to understand the schemes and strategies of the devil or even my own evil desires. And he came in and he saved me. And that's what we want to do today is just introduce to you Jesus, the one who loves you more than anybody on this planet. So if you're ready to make a commitment, I simply want to lead you in a prayer, but not just repeat a prayer, but mean it with all your heart. And if you would, you can just stare right at back at me, but I'd really like for you just to close your eyes and bow your head and that you would just open your heart to Jesus and repeat this prayer. Let's pray together. Just pray this prayer. It's pretty simple, but it's profound. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I have sinned against you, and I'm sorry. I repent of my sin. I turn from my wicked ways, and I turn to you, Jesus. So I open the door to my heart. I invite you to come in. Forgive me of all my sin. Wash me clean with your precious blood. Save my soul. Give me eternal life. Baptize me in the power of your Holy Spirit so I may live for you, serve you, obey your word, love you all the days of my life. 
I ask in faith, and I believe in my heart that you, Jesus, rose again on the third day so that I could be saved today. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you meant that with all your heart, according to what the Word of God says, not me, but the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, they will be saved. And I believe that you've given your heart to Jesus and God has forgiven you. Now, it's a commitment. It's not a one-time prayer. It's like when you get married, you're committing to each other, going to live together, have a relationship together. Well, that's what it means to be saved, a commitment to live for Jesus and let Him be the Lord of your life. So this is what I want to encourage you to do. Find a Bible-believing church, get involved, get active, contact that pastor, tell him that you have been saved and you want to serve God, get involved in a Bible study that's going to help you grow. It's all becoming like Jesus. That's what it means. If you're here in the Houston area, we're Fellowship of the Nations. You can go to FOTN.org and get our information. Man, we'd love for you to be a part of our fellowship if that's where God leads you. Listen, the main thing is spend time with Jesus every day. Talk to Him. He's listening. Get involved in church because God created you with purpose. He's gifted you now with gifts that you can use to build His kingdom. Now. We praise God for that. Get online, FOTN.org. Just let us know, hey, I received Jesus Christ today. He's my Lord, my Savior. And we'd like to send you some information, maybe even a Bible to get you started on reading God's Word. We love you. We thank God for what He's doing in your life. God bless you.